no matter what walk of life, the one thing that nearly everybody hates to see is hibernation. And uh, it, it does really elicit a very strong reaction from people. What we're talking about is where we have a word that's too long to fit on a line of text and it's split. In the case here, the word January. It splits the word in a specific point and then we are given a hyphen at the end of that line and the rest of the word continues on the line underneath. And on the face of it, it appears that we have two straightforward options. Leave it on because it's turned on by default or turn hyphenation off. There is an impact in either scenario. The whole reason that hyphenation exists is because quite often it's normal to have copy that's aligned to the left hand side. And then we have what's called a ragged edge on the right hand side where the line breaks and then continues in the next line down. Now, whether you left aligned, center or right aligned, it is inevitable that you will have a ragged edge on one or both sides. So hyphenation is an attempt to try and reduce how much that ragged edge varies. If it's turned off, then the ragged edge will increase, but turned on, you will have to put up with words being split across your lines of text, but the edge of your text won't quite be ragged quite as much. The alternative is, that you delve into some of the deeper, darker areas of the paragraph styles panel and you specify exactly how you want your columns of text to be balanced. And that's what I'm going to talk you through here. I'm going to take you through my preferred geeky settings for how you set up your body copy. So with my text frame selected and having turned off hyphenation so we can see a difference between the two, I'm going to go to my paragraph styles panel and then Alt and left click to create a new style. Close body hyphenation, uh, apply starter selection turned on and the preview checkbox turned on and then we'll head straight down to hyphenation. So there's a checkbox, as you can see, where you can turn it on or turn it off. So with it turned on, the default options are that it will only hyphenate words that are at least five characters long. Now I prefer to increase that to at least seven. So it's going to hyphenate less often now. And then you can choose after how many characters will it start to hyphenate. So in this case, I prefer to set this to either three or four, and then it will hyphenate and break how many uh, end characters in a word. Well, again, I tend to increase that to three, and I only like to have one hyphenation per line. So I'm going to drop that right down to one. You can set what's called a hyphenation zone. Essentially, you can dictate how much white space is allowed at the end of a line of unjustified text before hyphenation kicks in. And for me, well, I set this to around about 17 points, which translates to 6.35 millimeters, but you can play around with this value. I just tend to find that this is one that's worked for me in the past and I stick with it. And turn off the checkboxes for hyphenate last word and we definitely don't want to hyphenate across a column. So for those situations where you want to use hyphenation, but you don't want to resort to InDesign's very aggressive settings, these are the ones that I would tend to recommend. There is an alternative to having your text aligned to the left, the center or the right hand side, and that is to justify so that all the lines in your paragraphs will use the full width of the text frame and then the only line of the paragraph that will be aligned to the left, the center or the right hand side is the very last line. That seems like an ideal solution because aesthetically it looks a lot better than a left center or right line text. There's no ragged edge, but the danger we have is in the example I've shown you down towards the bottom where if you don't get the spacing right between your words, then you'll get these unsightly white gaps in an effort to try and use the full width of the text frame. And you'll get this thing called rivers. So if you have that white space running down through the majority of several lines, it just doesn't look good. And that's something we should always try and avoid. So again, these are my options that I use for justified text. So I'll select the text frame and I'll alt and left click to create a new paragraph style. And I'll call that justified. Make sure the checkboxes are turned on for preview and apply style to selection. I'm going to go down to um, hyphenation. I will turn it on and I'm going to use my preferred settings. It will give me better line spacing. Of course, you could turn hyphenation off if you wish to. And then I'll click on justification. 
And then for the three options we're going to work with, the first is word spacing. So this means how much of a white gap will be allowed between each word. The minimum will be to shrink that by 80%. Of course, the desired is to leave it at a standard 100%, but we will allow it to stretch a little bit to 110%, the white space between each of the words. Then we have letter spacing. So this is the white space between each of the characters. Again, we'll allow the minimum to be minus 2%, desired zero, and then the maximum can increase to up to 4%. And the final one, glyph scaling, is how much do we allow in design to increase or decrease the size of the actual characters themselves? So in this case, I tend to find that just dropping this to a minimum allowed of 99%, leaving desired set to 100, of course, and the maximum to 101% will give you those lovely balanced columns of justified text that you'll be looking for.